stories in today's video. 1. Ieta for not wanting my 23F, dad, 49M, to bring his mistress to my future life events? 2. My wife cheated on me, so I waited until she moved on to cheat with her. My father, 49M, and I, 23F, don't have the best relationship, but it has gotten notably worse since he and my mother, 49F, got divorced in September last year. My mom and I are extremely close, and live 45 minutes from each other. My dad lives in a different state than us. My mom only moved to my state after the divorce, because she couldn't continue to afford to live in the state she was in, though she loved it there. The divorce uprooted her life, literally. Context is important, so let me give you the basics. My mother and father were high school sweethearts, and were about to hit their 28th anniversary last year. My father, however, had a problem with staying faithful to my mom. He was a military man, and my dad always had multiple relationships outside of the marriage. This has resulted in my mom contracting multiple STDs over the years. My mom kept catching him, but my dad would gaslight her into thinking she was not good enough, and that was why he would step out of the marriage. Fast forward to last year. My mom caught my dad with an escort, and decided to pack her bags and take some space from him, and went to stay at a friend's house. On mom's birthday he asked her for a divorce. He pushed getting it finalized as quickly as possible, and it was finalized within 59 days. A week after the divorce was finalized, my dad moved Alice into their house. He admitted to my mom that he and Alice had gotten together before he brought up divorce and had been a thing for a time. Alice is between the ages of 30 and 39 but we are not sure what her age actually is because my dad keeps changing it when asked. I've never spoken to or met her. My dad asked me my opinion on marrying Alice, and I told him that was his choice but that I thought it was too fast. My dad did not know I knew about him cheating, I figured it out on my own and it was later confirmed. My mom has not moved on, and is still struggling with the trauma of the divorce. Tonight, I told my dad that I did not want Alice at my graduation in May, or wedding in September, because my mom would be there. I told him it was less than a year since the divorce, and that I knew how, more specifically when, his relationship with Alice actually started, and if he did not want to attend due to my decision, that was his choice, but I made up my mind. My dad told me it's not fair I'm excluding people that are part of his life, and that it, was not my choice, and that he was trying to be, open and honest with, his, intentions, Ieta for not wanting Alice present at these events? ETA, I'm an only child. My dad has a vasectomy when I was five. Alice has no children that I know of. Here's another situation with the same story. Throw away because I don't want this to come back to me I am getting married soon and I have not invited my father or his mistress. He cheated on my mother and essentially screwed her over. I want nothing to do with that person I sadly have to call human and a father. He spent my god damn college fund which was almost 80% of my mother's money on his mistress and has only called me for money despite having a bunch of his own knowing we were barley surviving just so he could belittle us. He has always expected things in life without during the heavy work and my grandmother encourages it which is why he grew up to be a deadbeat father and entitled. I got a phone call from him expecting a wedding invitation. I laughed, said no, and then hung up. Less than an hour later my grandmother called to chew me out and said I was being an ungrateful and spiteful brat. I almost choked on the food I was eating when hearing this. I can agree it was spiteful to laugh at him but he laughed at me for years and nobody cared but when I laughed at him one time they acted like I murdered someone or something. Now my dad's family is on my case about being rude. I wanted to know if I was being spiteful or ungrateful. Great, 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 great. I was dating this woman exclusively and were in a committed relationship. She had started into this relationship with a bit of trepidation. She had told me that anyone she dates lasts three weeks and she's on to the next one because the guys manage to do something within that time to have them go their separate ways. This was validated by her friends who didn't want to get too close to me because they knew I'd be gone soon. She was a divorced mom with a bubbly personality and easily fun to be around. I survived the initial three-week period and her friends warmed up to me. We were with each other every minute we could get. Weekends were all about going to see friends of our play bars and events around town, drinking, dancing, joking, teasing, obnoxiously making out, and going home to sleep. She had finally got to a point of accepting me as a loyal partner who didn't screw up by talking to other women. 
After nearly two years together she was coming to a point in her life where she had to make a decision to find a new job. She had been unemployed for a while and her house was getting to the point of being a huge liability. She had spoken to a lifelong friend of hers that said that there are plenty of jobs in her field in Phoenix, Arizona. It was a big move from Buffalo, New York but she wanted change. On Easter of that year she left and moved to Phoenix. My soft heart said I'll be there in November because I loved her. We never had a crossed moment and always talked. A few months later I went down to visit and see if I'd like the new city. We immediately went back into the honeymoon phase and my short vacation was just about over. I met her co-workers and thought them to be cool. That they were going to look out for her until I came back permanently. The end of October, beginning of November rolls around and I'm driving cross-country to live with her and her two teenage daughters. Everything is great. It's the first time we ever cohabited together. We had to adjust to each other's habits. I was a hardcore gamer and my game of choice was Madden. I played religiously. And that month together was a learning curve. In the time I was with her I didn't know she was on two types of meds, one Chantix, spelling, to quit smoking and the other an antidepressant. She was not taking them like she was supposed to, well she began self-medicating with alcohol and cigarettes. I discovered her budgeting skills were horrendous. We lived in a place she picked out that was too much just for her salary and that didn't include gas or groceries. I'd pleaded for her to go grocery shopping with me and to bring the kids. Well that was one of the potential arguments we had. Another was spending money in Starbucks as opposed to making it at home. $20 a day at a coffee shop for three people followed by lunch and dinner outside was not being economical. We lived in a huge house. I was doing the cooking and groceries as well as looking for a new job. This house made it that we could sit in opposite sides of the house without seeing each other. The major argument we had was over a bottle of wine. I had bought a huge bottle to cook with. I was frantically looking for it. I'm known to be forgetful but I knew where I had placed it. I asked her in the nicest and loving tone if she had seen it. She proceeded to go to the garbage can and ask if it was what was in the trash. I flipped out. One of the reasons I flipped out is because I came from an alcoholic household where this type of behavior was a constant even when under lock and key. She also grew up in an alcoholic family where her mom was a bad one which led to more than half of the things that went on in her life. This event that occurred between us caused me to shut down. When I shut down I can't talk because it's going to be vicious. I need my cool down period. But neither one of us was budging. It took nearly two weeks before we were on speaking terms. In the next month it was my birthday. We were getting back to being a couple. That night her daughters had an event and we went. I didn't want to upset her when all I wanted to do was spend my day dancing and having a drink. Well by the time the kids event was over and we dropped them home, the kids wanted to go with us. It was 11 p.m. I'm getting upset because I wanted my one drink before midnight with her. We got to the bar at 11.55 p.m. She started saying how tired she was etc. We had that drink and a few dances then she bumps in some female she knows. They converse for an hour without even introducing me. When that ended I was who's that? She proceeded to tell me that it was the girlfriend of the maintenance guy's son. I asked her why didn't she introduce me. She said she didn't think of it. Well we went home. We didn't have birthday s asterisk x which was shocking. Instead I went to sleep with a practical stranger. New Year's comes and I'm missing my kids. So I flew to NY to surprise them. Before leaving I gave her money to pay the back rent and the current rent due. She was shocked but I told her it needed to be done. Somewhere between time zones and technology I sent everyone New Year's greetings from NY. Supposedly her daughters got them but she didn't and felt slated. I finally got back a week after New Year's and the house is cold. I was being shunned. Every sense of my being was being overloaded by hey there's something wrong. She was working late every night because of year-end audits. I had dinner ready waiting for her. I sat down at the table talking to her asking her how her day was. She would talk but she'd say she was tired and head to bed. One night we were sleeping and I awoke. I had this extreme sense of dread. The only thing missing was the suspenseful music playing. I headed downstairs into the kitchen where her handbag was. We always had an open door policy of whatever you need it's there just let me know what you needed so if it needs to be replaced it gets done. During the move down to as she had her phones turned off because she couldn't afford it. 
I lent her an extra phone I had from my divorce. I went right to that phone like I was guided there. I opened it up and scrolled the texts. There I saw it after going through some random text. You love me. I love you too. I shut the phone door out of Embair asterisk SSMENT. What the hell did I just read? Maybe it was a joke. Nope. I proceeded to read every text before and after that single text message to get the gist of what was going on. The text was from the maintenance guy she was working with. This was taking place since November. I had changed my life to follow her cross country and I get presented with a knife in my back and heart that gets twisted the more it's being placed into me. The following day I had asked her if there was anything going on between us. She just said no. We just need some time apart living apart. I just shook my head and said okay. I never did or said anything. Instead I presented her with the same question once again the next day. No one was home in the morning. Instead I just calmly looked in her eyes and said, is there anyone or anything that needs to be said? We are adults. I'm a big boy. If there is anything please say it. She blank eyed stared me and said no. I returned back to her. Wow. Really? Nothing? She was given the option to come clean and said once again no. I told her in one sure tone, you are so full of sh asterisk t. She stared at me in bewilderment. I told her I looked at the phone and read the text and she had two times to come clean. She finally responded back with a yes and then said it was all because of me. That I didn't have a job which was true but I had a few grand saved up yet she didn't have a car, she used my. She had no phone she used my. She couldn't pay bills yet I paid them. I then proceeded to tell her that if I'm so bad to do it with me. I took my car and phone and said you can go to work but not in my car and she could call a taxi or a friend but not with my phone. I presented her with this question. If I'm such a stranger living here then those two months of rent I gave you before I left to go NY consider me paid up on my half of the rent until the end of January. I eventually moved out by January. I got a place of my own. I struggled but I kept my dignity even when she had failed to pay bills and the TV and electric was shut off and I lived like that in the dark. My unintentional revenge was we decided to talk over drinks. We ended up naked and drunk and had s asterisk x even though she was with this new guy. I marked her up real bad for a long time. I knew what I was doing. I had the intention of every time you look at your woman remember that I did that. Also that I could do that any time that I wanted. That was mine before it was yours. But I knew that if it came back I'd toss it away. It's just a toy now. I know it sounds bad but when anyone does something that's life changing for another it's a big deal. But when you treat it like anything less than gold then and only then everything that is asterisk associated with it is worthless including the person. Since 2010 I've been single and dated so many women in those years. I've met some remarkable women that make me want to be a better person but also met women who I wish I could get my time back. The lesson I've learned from all this is trust my gut.